These are the luckiest moments in the NBA. Because up first, Aaron Holiday makes the luckiest shot of his life. Yes! Shooter's touch. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But now it's time for the craziest tipping you'll ever see. What more would you want in the team? <laughs> Big baby, mean mugging for the family. And if that mean mug didn't give you chills, this will. Something that everybody assumes happens for everyone, and there's a lot of people out there that don't have that opportunity. Did Jamal Murray just do that? He was in irons. He gave up the dribble, and somehow his prayer was answered. Seven years later, and Jamal Murray is still leaving fans in awe. But imagine making a pass so good, ends up counting as three points. Each all-time leading road. Oh, that was over the head of the Oh, oh I went in! <laughs> Tyler Hero! If this was Fortnite, then my man definitely turned on aim assist. But up next, it's not a video game, it's a double pump reverse going wrong. Well, not exactly. Giving a joy. Turnover. Here's my high Luke. That was a close one. And yet, LeBron doesn't have to worry about if his shots will go in. When you're the chosen one, even your misses become makes. Thank you, Doris. Oh. Well, he saw. <laughs> that should count. Went in. Absolutely. It went in. I'm wow, must be nice to be the king. But now, let's transition from this generation's GOAT to Brandon Miller's GOAT. Because imagine making a shot from behind the backboard. We can't let Marcus Morris Sr. get to, his, to the middle. Wow. Jeez, that's cold-blooded. Although, this next clip is a lot less cold-blooded and a whole lot more hilarious. Oh, he went click on him, didn't he? Jordan Clarkson all over the map, and he knocked it down. But now that we got the giggles out the way, I got bad news for the Charlotte Hornets. You Bruh. stink, and you got bad luck. Here's Martin on the cross. Find Daniel Gaffer. Good to see him back in the game to count the bucket. We've seen some circus shots. <laughs> I, I, I thought the air was. I thought the air was when the ball was in the air. Dang, the MJ ownership curse was real. Meanwhile, you can't find the word unlucky anywhere in Paul Pierce's vocabulary. After all, when you're best friends with the rim, there are very few things you can't do. Does he get the roll? Oh, he does! Woo! And Frank Vogel wants to talk about it. Like one of those old McDonald's commercials. Now, that's crazy. But if you thought that was a lucky bounce, guess again. Paul just said to him, you got to cut through. Teague was trying to that? draw the foul and gets the three. <laughs> to all the physics teachers out there, good luck explaining that one. All that to say, it's still got nothing on Jeff Green. Because it's one thing for a basketball to bounce two or three times before going in, but this next shot is in a category of its own. A flip shot. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bounces. Not two, not three, but seven bounces? That's borderline insanity. But if anyone understands what it's like to be Jeff Green, it's Manu Ginobili. See, sense of urgency there. Ginobili. That's a three. The ball didn't go through the net. The officials like they went through the net. Jeez, that was so lucky. But then there's Steven Adams. Because make no mistake, there's no such thing as an accident when this guy's on the court. It'll be Steven Adams. They give us Steven Adams some The shot and the shimmy? This play belongs in the Nate Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Meanwhile, I'm not sure where this next shot belongs. But spoiler alert, it definitely doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. And somehow wow. Booker taps it in. Rubio scooping over to Devin. Looks like Christmas came early for Devin Booker. But almost exactly three years earlier, Russell Westbrook made a shot so improbable, so outrageous, and so bonkers that I'm still in disbelief. Three point lead for the Thunder. Here it is Westbrook lost the handle and it goes home. I've already said the L word a lot in this video, but I'll say it again, bro got lucky. But if there's anyone who deserves some good luck, it's my man Chris Bosh. Wade using the straight pick and roll again, this time Bosh able to pull it up and uh, that one in. <laughs> When it comes to the 2010s heat, everyone loves to talk about LeBron and Wade. But it wouldn't be the big three without Bashasaurus. Although, you don't need to be an NBA legend to leave people speechless. But you tell me, who's luckier? Is it Delonte West or is it Luke Kennard? Fans. 
don't see. I just feel like the coaches are very surprised at the coaches this year. I don't think I've ever seen a basketball sit for that long. Yo, that ball bounced so many times, I think I lost count. But now it's time to raise the stakes because everyone can make a lucky shot now and then. But how about when the game is on the line? Millsap to set the stream for him. Game on the line once again. Team taking a lot of time. Look at what was done. to be kidding me. A tap dancer at the hole. Ouch, that's one way to silence an arena. This reminds me of Tayshawn Prince, because for a brief second, Prince's shot made time come to a halt. He's also got five rebounds. Prince spins away down the baseline. Hold up, is that a basketball spinning up there? Or is that secretly a Beyblade? But if you enjoyed that, chances are high you'll also enjoy this. With geography, as you may know. <laughs> Jack Duffin. It's just one of those nights, Jack. It actually was a great defensive yeah. reaction. It just the, the flight of the ball went right in off the glass. A wise man once told me the best offense is a good defense. Martin Gortat must have taken that too literally. On the other hand, Dirk Nowitzki knows that this statement is all a lie. The best offense isn't a good defense. It's an even better offense. Gets to Nowitzki. Anthony on Nowitzki. Nowitzki one-on-one -on -one with Anthony. Holds the ball. Holds the ball. Puts up a tough shot. Oh! Some way, somehow, you can always count on Dirk to find the bottom of the net. Just like you can count on these final 10 moments, from a game-winning tip-in to making a layup with your head, the moments are only gonna get luckier and luckier. Cause at number 10, Lou Williams saved up his good luck all season just to be able to do this. Lou Williams, what a shot from Lou Williams. How did that go in? Put simply, playoff basketball hits different. However, if you ask me, playoff basketball isn't a season, it's a mindset. Because in 2010, the Hornets found themselves trailing by one with under four seconds to go. That's when Mike Dunleavy dug deep into his bag of tricks and did something incredible. He comes to Granger, Granger. Oh, he got it off. Oh! Chicken! Yes! Yes, Mike Dunleavy got it. Mike Dunleavy tips it in at the buzzer. Even Batman needs his Robin. Just like every Danny Granger needs a Mike Dunleavy. But you can't have a video about luck without showing Brandon Ingram's half-court buzzer beater. But that's again, that's big news. That's big news in this situation. Brandon will get it back. Oh, unbelievable! Oh my God! Just the way they drew it up. Lord have mercy. Was that a hook shot? <laughs> Can someone explain to me why this dude only has one all-star appearance? But in the meantime, check out my man Dane. If anybody in the league, they find certain players to go at, and they get you in foul trouble. <laughs> now, what Dane pulled off was nothing short of unbelievable. But what Kawhi Leonard pulled off against the Portland Trailblazers, I think we've seen that before. Lillard gets switched on to him. Kawhi. At least Philly fans aren't alone in their suffering. However, up next, we got one of the worst blunders in NBA history. But if he's not going to do that, he can throw up individual numbers. Oh my God. That is unbelievable. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I, don't, I was just going to say, I, I don't think I ever have. Yikes, that's pretty bad, even for opening night. But fear not, Clint Capella also did something embarrassing. The only difference, his mistake ended up in the right basket. Beverly's going to try a three. Did that go off Capella's head? Yes, it did. You know what we call that? Good job of using your head. Put simply, that's what you call a heads-up play. Yeah, now that we're entering the top three, it's time to rewind the clocks back to 1995, because that's when Eric Murdoch did the unthinkable. Lesson learned. With a little hustle and a lot of heart, anything is possible. That said, if you rewind the clocks one more year, you'll get something even more jaw-dropping. Did not allow him to put it on the floor and get by. In 
1994, three things happened. The World Series was canceled, the TV sitcom Friends premiered on NBC, and Isaiah Ryder made the luckiest shot in NBA history. Or at least it was the luckiest shot in NBA history. However, that's before Baron Davis came along. Because unlike the rest of these plays, Davis didn't just get lucky, he broke records. It was February 17, 2001, and with 0.7 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Davis decided to attempt the record for the longest shot in NBA history. Ashburn, who could run the baseline, Davis, out of the count. Forget winning or losing, an 89-foot shot is a victory in itself. This goes to show it doesn't matter how much skill you have, without a little luck, NBA players would be hopeless. Well, that's unless you watch the video on the screen. Because if you want to make the longest shot in NBA history, then you already know what you got to do. 